Yes, Valley Club, it is the moment you've been waiting for. We have gameplay of a full Superior 6 team in action on the test server. How good is this team? How good are they going to be in Crucible? Because we get the new rules for Cosmic Crucible as well, the full season rules. Is this going to be a hit or a miss? And I got a free code for some free stuff for you, Valley Club. We got all the calculations for next week's events and more. And if you're ready for it, you know what to do. Find that like button and let's go smash it. And welcome back to the Valley Plane channel. Hope you're having a great day. I am Valley Plane. And we got a lot in this video. We got an exclusive code for you. We're going to take a look at these guys, the Superior 6 on the test server, full gameplay. How good are they going to be? We also have all the calculations for next week's events. But if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Wars content. At least five Marvel Strike Wars videos per week on this channel. Usually there's a lot more. We got exclusive reveals like this, gameplay videos, news videos, question and answer videos, everything to help your experience in Marvel Strike Wars. But before we get to all that stuff, we're gonna start off with the new rules for Cosmic Crucible. And the new rules for Cosmic Crucible Season 5, the great thing here, just like in War, it's going to feature Exhausted. So if you have some crazy rooms with Super Scroll or some rooms you won't able to beat normally, hopefully this season it'll make it a little easier. You might not be able to win the War, but you'll still be able to get some full clears, and hopefully that's what is going to happen here. The global rules, obviously, they're going to be based around the Superior 6, also the Sinister 6, which is nice. You can use some of your older characters as well. But for offense and defense, Sinister 6 characters are going to get 200% more focus, 15% more barrier, Superior 6 characters on successful attack, bury yourself for 15% of max health, remove revive once from each target attack, and on spawn, going to gain defense up. And just like normal on defense, all characters are going to gain 20% max health, 10% damage, and the new thing, the exciting thing, after each complete attempt, gain a stack of exhaust canceled combats will not add exhaust so this is great if you're looking for full clears you may still lose which is fine but you'll get full clears you'll get all the crucible currency if, if this is working like i think it's gonna work all right stage one teamwork on offense and defense striker characters on allied turn is gonna gain assist now so very simple rule next one stage shoot temporal shielding another simple rule offense defense tech and skill characters on basic are going to gain speed up and with speed up at the end of the turn we're going to gain more barrier for that character's max health i think these first two rooms give us a lot of theory crafting opening up a lot of different teams a lot of different defenses stage three corrupting power on offense and defense ultimate abilities cost two less to use i like these rooms with ultimates costing less when using an ultimate ability spread all negative effects from self to all adjacent allies it's going to be interesting there spec ops and uh what these the devs did say about this room just to go back this room is going to be more about trying to trick the ai into using their ultimate and spreading the negative effects rather than having this to do that on yourself so bringing in a team that is going to spread this or cause the ai to do that is uh kind of your goal there on offense defense and stage for a spec ops room on successful dodge gain stealth characters with stealth are going to gain 20 percent damage this is kind of a spider room like a web warriors or something room mutant immune system obviously mutants are going to go here on offense defense mutant characters on turn clearing all negative effects from self heal self for 10 percent max health for each negative effect cleared and all characters and then in turn are going to gain defense down Ooh, that is going to be a tricky room and stage six rules of combat offense and defense villain characters successful attack by defense down to each target attack which is kind of what the devs wanted to have for villains villains make the, the opponents weaker and heroes well on sex of attack apply offense down to each target attack and there's gonna reduce the damage of the enemy so kind of protecting uh the the people that the hero is normally gonna protect so that's kind of what the theme of this interesting how this is gonna work but let's go right into some gameplay of the superior six try to build them as little as possible but some of the teams that we are facing in this test is gonna be pretty big so we built them up level 95 we have six gold stars at least on them some of the characters like lizard doc Ock has seven gold stars but five red in all of them and this is what we have as far as t4s no basic on doc Ock, but he does have that healer iso 8 class lizard also has all the t4s except for the basic he has that raider iso 8 class green goblin we're gonna start him off with raider as well all the t4s with him none of the waken abilities though spider slayer all the t4s and striker attached to spider slayer craven also has that striker and all the t4s except for the basic now this is supposed to be a cosmic crucible team they are going to be dominant in cosmic crucible and you've seen the new season rules this team is going to get a lot of bonuses 
We're not going to test it in Cosmic Crucible for that reason. We know they're going to be good. But the main reason we're not testing them is because of this. This is my opponent in Cosmic Crucible. It is a default hand minion team. My goodness, we're going to smash everything here. So we're actually going to do our test of this Superior Six in War, which is another game mode they're supposed to be very, very good in. And the first team we're going to test this Superior Six against in War is the Infestation team. A little bit of a punch up. Let's go. All right. And we want to avoid trying to hit a big time Spider-Man. I guess we're going to start on Swarm. We'll start with the big ultimate here. Oh, we hit him anyway. Yeah, we clear all the effects, which is good. We can get in front of big time Spider-Man, not allowed to do his ultimate because of the turn meter manipulation. We go down, there he goes, manipulating our turn meter. Blizzard takes the brunt of it. The rest of the positive effects don't get flipped though. So we're actually in pretty good shape. Blizzard might die here, but Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Craven the Hunter should uh, have no problem finishing off the rest of this infestation team. Yeah, they're going after Green Goblin. And as soon as we get a turn, they are gonna die. Now, normally I wouldn't go after Big Time Spider-Man. Now, nah, we're still not going to go after him here. Let's go after Black Widow. Uh, we're almost killing Black Widow. Almost killed Big Time Spider-Man with that one. we got to learn these moves. Uh, I guess the basic does do some adjacent target attacks. And let's just go kill Big Time Spider-Man right now. He is dead. And the rest of this team is pretty much easy. We're going to auto this. And this is pretty much a win in my book. Next is a slight punch down against the top war defense team in the game right now. The new Avengers. All right. And they start off. Tiger goes. Gives a lot of bleeds on all of our characters here. There goes Thing. Puts in a stun on Doc Ock. And yeah, this is this. This is not going very well. This is a Crucible team. We're not supposed to be a war team. And you're not doing that good against a top war defense team. Yeah, so... Don't expect this uh, team to beat the new Warriors. They are a Crucible team after all. They should have no problem in uh, Cosmic Crucible. But yeah, or I guess they're not going to be as good against a top war defense team right now in the game. Next battle against the newest team in the game, the Pegasus team. They're supposed to be a raid team, but also very good in war. And we got a Crucible team going against them in war. Let's see what one wins out, the Crucible team or the raid team. And here comes Green Goblin. I think the biggest threat is going to be Rescue, I think. Let's go after her. Everything has blocked there. And Green Goblin, man, nice AoE, lots of damage, and just inflicts them with defense downs. All right, let's keep going up to rescue so they can't heal. I think Kestrel for the damage is going to be my, our next biggest threat, but she is the biggest character there. So we get all the rest of these characters down, and then uh, Kestrel's the last one there. We should be good. All right, the taunting Iron Man Infinity War gets dead. Let's go summon a... Is this going to be a Vault? Oh, no, we can't summon anybody. They got a Kestrel. Forgot about that. Don't do that, guys. <laughs> let's go take out... Uh, let's go take out Rescue so that she can't heal up the character. Oh, let's take out the rest of the team. Just Rescue, just Kestrel left. Kestrel does not have enough juice to take out Lizard. Gets healed up by Rescue and gets a character back. Iron Man Infinity War is back. All right, our Lizard is dead. We have our Green Goblin going right now. Let's make sure that Rescue does not uh, bring anybody back to life, does not heal anybody. We're gonna go after Iron Man, just to give it a four on one, three on one battle now. Let's go after Iron Man now. We're going after all of them. Big AOE attack, and now another big AOE attack from Doc Ock. Yeah, Iron Man should bleed out, so we're going to just go work on Kestrel, and it looks like we are going to beat Pegasus. So yeah, Superior Six, pretty good on war offense. Maybe not against some of the top meta teams, but pretty good against uh, a lot of these good teams out there and last but not least let's go to a little crazy on the test server we got a super scroll with dark hold not expecting to win this battle they couldn't be the new avengers and a punch across i'm not expecting to win this but just for some good test footage let's let's go in the name of science ladies and gentlemen all right are we gonna get a turn super scroll goes after craven he is now vulnerable now exposed craven looks like he's about to die oh are we gonna get even a turn craven's dead we still haven't taken a turn yet uh, yeah, still not taking a turn. Oh, there, there we go. Now we got Green Goblin. Are we going to be able to do anything? That's a pretty large Super Scroll. Nothing, uh, nothing gets hit on the ultimate there. Nobody even in the yellow. Yeah, we're not even close. I think we're going to have to, uh, have a much bigger Superior Six to even have a chance or not even use this team. Yeah, this is not going well. Super Scroll, Dark Hole, just too powerful for even the newest Cosmic Crucible team. So Superior Six looked very good in war. Looks to be maybe a top 10 war offense team. Not sure how they're going to be on war defense. The Cosmic Crucible, unfortunately, we didn't get a good test there. But yeah, you know they're going to be very, very good in Cosmic Crucible. This is the battle plan for October 28th through November 3rd. 
Zombie Juggernaut is going to be released on October 30th, one day before Halloween. New raids are coming, the Alpha raids, and uh, hopefully we get a new difficulty of those Alpha raids soon. The two events that are, are the events that are happening: Unkillable Force, where you're going to earn Crimson Tombstones from the heroic difficulty of the Zombie Juggernaut event, and then Viral Orbs from the hard difficulty in the Unstoppable Undead event. That is a Juggernaut release event. Also, battling in war and war with undying characters are going to score you even more. And for the web milestone to get the points for that, you're going to need to spend some power cores. Also, a Morbius Blitz. So if you don't have Morbius, you can get some more shards for that character. Also, an alliance-wide event. We're going to have to battle in Cosmic Crucible. And the good thing, it does look that the limits were used properly this time. So you don't have to be stressing if the rest of your alliance can't do full clears. Uh, Moon Knight's Mr. Knight costume is going to the Cosmic Crucible store for normal Crucible credits. And there is a quick Grumble Blitz feature with A-Force next week. And the rest of the blog up to this point was about the Superior 6, the Sinister 6. We already discussed all of that in videos earlier this week, so you can check out the video up there. Let's get right into the Zombie Juggernaut event. There's going to be three difficulties. A story difficulty. No requirements for the story difficulty. You're going to have a full squad, and you can get a bunch of different rewards. First time rewards there consist of Hella Shard, Training Orbs, Gold Orbs. The main difficulty is going to be this challenge difficulty. Requires any five characters. So you could you could get, use any five characters. The main source of Juggernaut shards in this event is going to be this challenge difficulty. Each no rewarding shards for the viral orb, which is going to be used in this event that we're going to discuss in just a little bit. And it's also going to contain shards for Zombie Juggernaut, Zombie Iron Man, Crimson Tombstones, which is going to be the currency for this event that's coming up. And completing this difficulty will get you a corny candy player frame i i like these frames i like these little uh visual touches that don't really do anything gameplay wise but are, are these little visual touches i like i like pushing for those uh, this may be an event that you want to spend some power cores on normally these events campaigns I, I spend a lot of power cores so if you do spend a power core it's a good thing there is a web milestone so you're getting kind of double up on this and the bonus difficulty this is where you're going to get a lot of first time rewards including some shards for the event but for this you're gonna need zombie juggernaut at three yellow stars if you want to do mission one mission two four stars mission three you need them at five stars you have six stars for mission four and mission five is gonna be seven stars a lot of good first time rewards dark promo credits including uh stuff so i'm not sure if we're gonna be able to unlock zombie juggernaut with enough stars in this challenge difficulty to complete the bonus difficulty but we will see when the event comes all right the associated events next week with this event unkillable force and the web milestone immovable dead web milestone let's start with this one because normally these web milestones feed into the calculations of the main event so to help ensure your roster rises up the dead utilize power cores in exchange for additional crimson tombstones for the unkillable force milestone so this stuff leads into this main milestone let's go check out the points for this very simple web milestone like i said it's a very simple milestone just basically spend power cores it is power cores but if you spend them you're gonna get some crimson tombstones if you're doing 500 per day well you're gonna get 4,000 crimson tombstones per day you're spending 800 power cores per day which is pretty grindy in my opinion you're gonna get 6,000 crimson tombstones per day that all feeds into the main milestone event you're also getting some legacy three orbs on the rewards here but the main thing you're gonna get is this crimson tombstones a few other silver promotion credits as well as far as the calculations though again very simple it's a one day milestone repeat six times so seven total days 500 power cores a day that is 4,000 crimson tombstones per day over the life of this event that is 28,000 crimson tombstones you're spending 800 power cores per day that is 6,000 crimson tombstones per day which is 42,000 crimson tombstones for the life of this event so yeah the web milestone's pretty simple you spend power cores you're gonna get some crimson tombstones back in exchange and if you spend a lot of power cores you're gonna get a lot of crimson tombstones all of that is gonna lead into this unkillable force event you're gonna need to earn crimson tombstones you can find those in viral orbs in the undead event the hard difficulty the first time reward in the undead event also the web milestones that we talked about and uh, you could also earn more points in this and war using undying characters are going to score you even more points let's go take a look at the calculations for this and a lot of scoring opportunities here so uh some of the main things that you want to get to you want to get all of these uh points for the web milestones or the main monthly milestone first is going to be this cat suit that's going to be over at milestone 11 63 000 points for that also, if you notice, there is a seven red star Hella in these rewards. That is going to be milestone 13. You're going to need 83,000 points for that. And to score for this, well, you're going to need to score some crimson tombstones. One crimson tombstones is one point. No limit on that. Battles in war, 
thousand points, 30,000, which means pretty simple. If you're doing 10 battles per day over the course of three wars, that is at 30,000. Very easy, very simple to get to that limit there. Also, if you have Zombie Juggernaut, you're going to score an extra 1,000 points. There is a cap in all these. Zombie Iron Man is going to give you more points if you have the cap. Hella is going to give you more points. So let's go take a look at these calculations and see how easy this event is. And once again, Unkillable Force, seven day milestone. Milestone 11 will get you to Cat Suit. Milestone 13 will get you a seven Red Star Hella. And the many Crimson Tombstone points you're going to earn from the actual Juggernaut event is still unknown. Let's just assume it's going to be a bad drop rate. But let's say, let's add up all the other points there. Battling in war again, 10 battles per day, three wars, 30,000 points. Very easy to hit that cap. If you have Zombie Juggernaut and are using him in war, that's a thousand points. If you battle with Zombie Z Iron Man, Another 800 points. If you have a seven star Hella, and if you're a longer time player, I'm assuming you have that. If you're a newer player, you might not be able to score all these points, but hopefully these Crimson Tombstones will allow you to get a lot of these other milestones. But if you have a seven star Hella, you're gonna get all these different milestones added up. If you add all of these Hella milestones, Zim milestones, Jugs milestones, and War milestones, that's gonna be 37,800 points. Now, if you are going from the web, spending 500 cores per day, that'll get you 65,000 points in this event, a little over 65,000 points. That'll get you to milestone 11. If you are doing your 800 cores per day, that is 42,000 points from the web milestones. That's going to get you a total with this number and this number, 79,800 points. That's going to get you to milestone 12. And if we look very quickly at the associated leaderboard with this, we'll see there is some pretty good rewards here. Dark promo credits, seven red star jugs, some level T2, level five ions. Now, most players are not going to get any red stars for their juggernaut, but if you're in the top one to two percent or even the top 10 percent, a lot of dark promotion credits on the line in this event. And next week's alliance event is called Skeleton Standoff. It is a final alliance event for this month, you're going to need to earn allied supply two or fragments from Alliance donations. Also, battle in Cosmic Crucible with additional progress for using new warriors. And the good thing, the limits look like they were to use properly this time. So looking at the skeleton standoff numbers here, all the cat head amulets, you're going to be able to get them at milestone 14. That is 330 thousand four hundred points if you want all the character shards and you can see you get some Firestar and gwenpool and titania other character shards if you want all those character shards that's going to be available at milestone 16 for 440,600 points and very quickly looking at scoring it does look that the limits were used correctly in this milestone taking a look at some of the calculations once again milestone 14 is going to get you all the cat head amulets milestone 16 is going to get you all the character shards in these rewards you win crucible battles that's gonna be a thousand points per win if you're only winning four rooms per round not even the full six over the course of three rounds 24 alliance members that's gonna be 288,000 points but the limit is only 264 so you should have no trouble getting to that limit if you have a full alliance that is engaged in cosmic crucible your new warrior battles well if you're using the new words that's going to be 12,000 points there's a limit there if you have your new warriors and your alliance mates have your new words at gear tier 16 that's an additional 36,000 points now there's a big assumption because it's always unsure about all how many allied supply orbs we're going to get per day in these calculations i've used the calculations of one orb which is 2,000 fragments over the course of four days 24 alliance members if this is what we're going to get, that is going to be an extra 192,000 points. If we add all of these numbers together, that is going to be 504,000 points. That is going to get you milestone 17. All the character shards, all these amulets. So very, very simple to do. Our next week, quick rumble blitz again, as we mentioned, is A Force, and there's a free claim on the web right now. So make sure you get your cat head amulets, your campaign energy, and your dark cock orb. Again, everything is something to change. And last but not least, if you enter the code D L E W C X, you will get some rewards. All players are eligible. You can only get this once, but you're gonna get some free 50 Hella shards, two gold orbs two training orbs and you can redeem this until november 8th now what the devs did say is that it's a random code unfortunately it's a random uh code there wasn't enough time to get a string out but they wanted to get this out 
to the content creators get this good immunity as soon as possible and hopefully next time they do this well it'll be a very more logical code and it won't be these random letters there that is it for this video let me know your thoughts on superior six let me know your thoughts on this new season of cosmic crucible and the events next week hopefully this video did provide you some value if it did leave it a like it is free for you and it helps out the channel i will see you guys next time there should be a video coming out tomorrow as well so make sure you stay tuned for that have a great rest of your day hulk fist bump valley flying out